Doki Doki Within is a mod. No maidens. Why, yes, I agree, damn it. Oh, we got the piano track. There's a world within me that I cannot explain. Ah! ah get it off! Get it off! Ah, oh, man, I'm just joking, man. But anyways, what is up, comrades? And welcome to Doki Doki Within. A mod that has apparently been hyped to the moon and back, but I did not know about until it was released. Yeah, seriously, bro. I did not know this mod even existed. <laughs> was even in the making. Until it got the full release, I believe, I believe it was released on Halloween, I'm not too sure. But anyways, this is a Monica Focus mod, so you already know that I'm going to have some extreme reactions to it. Now, okay, for the sake of, um, spoiling you already, I'm going to spoil you already. The reason I wanted to play this mod was A, because it was hyped as fuck, and that uh, people will not shut the fuck up about it. But also, B, this is exit music, but with Monica. So you already know how this story is going to end, and that is the main reason why I'm getting into this. But, without further ado... There. I figured it's the perfect name. Let's get into it. Yeah, I'm not putting my name on this. Fuck that. Act 1. Something about us. Ew, ew. It's a regular Tuesday morning like any other. Nothing too exciting, but not entirely boring either. Bruh. It's just the basic, run-of-the-mill school run. As usual, I'm waiting for Sayuri, my neighbor and childhood best friend. Why, why can not we just smash Sayuri? She's the kind of person you couldn't imagine making friends with day one. But I guess it just works since we known each other basically all our lives. In a way, she's like a little sister I never had, despite her being a whole two months older than me. Well, I mean, hey, there's nothing stopping me from fucking my sister, Oni-chan. This is Japan, after all, I'm guessing. I don't know, maybe. I'll look at the clock on my phone. <laughs> Alright, yeah, I'm, just, I'm really gonna have to get used to that, <laughs> comrade. Come on, Sayuri, we'll be late at this rate. Ah, you dumb bitch. I grumbled to myself. Eventually, the door to her house opens and out emerges Sayuri. I wonder, will she try to game end herself just like in exit music? Place your bets in the comments right now, no cheating. She's just getting her bag on, all the while keeping a half-eaten slice of toast firmly locked in her jaw. Bay Sayuri, bay Sayuri. Sorry, I overslept again. Her voice is partially muffled by the toast. I just roll my eyes and give her a smirk. <laughs> I figured. Hey! Etika has fallen into the river of Lego Sweet City. Quick, dispatch the Jose Fernandez fishing boat. Wait, why the fishing boat? Oh yeah, the Kobe Bryant rescue helicopter is currently in, you know, in maintenance. It's getting some repairs. I heard, I heard it got crashed. Oh, okay. Sayuri finally takes the toast out of her mouth and speaks, her voice still slightly muffled due to her chewing. That's mean, comrade. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I chuckle. Since we were young, it's always been easy to tease Sayuri from time to time. She knows I'm joking, but her reactions are way too fun to pass up. Ah, it's always fun picking on the dumb girl. Anyway, she coming? You dumb thought? Well, yeah! We soon start the walk up to school. With every passing minute, the street starts to get flooded with students ranging from groups of friends, those on their own, and couples. With Sari and I making small talk along the way up, she then brings up something that's clearly been on her, her mind for a bit. Say! You've not joined a club yet, have you? This ain't like the 500th time I've asked you this, right? Um, no, no, not yet, no, definitely not. I scratched the back of my neck as my voice trails off. 
Admittedly, I'd not really been looking for any clubs, because I'm a Sigma male who has time for that shit. None of the ones I've seen so far really piqued my interest. There hasn't been a Patrick Bateman club, or, you know, a Soldier Boy club. The Soldier Boy Appreciation Club, now that's a club I joined. And the one club I had been remotely interested in, the... Really, the music club? Had been closed the previous school year due to lack of funding. Oof! I then look over at Sayuri, who seemed to be remembering something. Well, maybe you can check out my club. That reminds me, Sayuri had recently told me that she was the vice president of the school's recently established literature club. Whilst literature had never really taken my fancy, I do remember my English grades being decent at least. That, and as a budding musician, it r really. So, so the, I already, I already know how this is gonna go. This is how we're gonna, you know, begin to like Monica and stuff like that, and how, you know, the ex, you know, get to have the relationship with Monica is because we're both musicians. I wonder what, I wonder what instrument MC plays, bro. I mean, probably a bass player. Actually, nah, he's probably he's probably one of those uh, weird ass flute players. That's probably more like him because he's just an absolute beta. I I already sense the beta ness coming off of you know MC's presence. It almost break down song lyrics to find the meaning behind each track. It kind of counts as poetry, right? I sigh. Uh, I mean, I don't really have much else to do, so I guess I can stop by. Yay! Puggers! Sorry, let's out a cheery yawn. Still half asleep, I guess. She then grumbles in a way that's still quite audible. Good job I asked Natsuki to make those cupcakes last night. <laughs> I decide to play dumb, even though I clearly heard her. That dumb thought. What was that? N nothing. Nothing. She chuckles as we now stand outside the school gates. Anyways, see you later. Sorry, wait! Before I can finish, she's already become one with the bustling masses. Damn it! I don't even know where the club is now. Knowing Sayuri, she'll realize that and let me know later, though, so I can't really complain too much. I check my timetable to remind me of my first period. Period 1. History. Mr. I. Sirizawa. Oh, we get to learn about Japanese history? Let's go! Specif I want to specifically learn about August of 1945. My favorite period in Japanese history. Ah, history. One of the few subjects I'm genuinely any good at, because it's the easiest. It's literally just a bunch of trivia. And I'm good at trivia. Totally. Time to get this day over with. The school day was about as ordinary as ever, and it's over as soon as it began. As I start packing my things, it hits me that I've not seen Sayuri since this morning. She's gone to the club without me, hasn't she? Ah, uh, she's gonna be by the door again because this is pretty much all vanilla dialogue. Just with, you know, they changed it up a bit. By the time I get to the door, a familiar flash of peach-colored hair and a red bow catch my eye. Ah, that thought. Sorry runs up to and then holds her arms against the wall. Ah, <sighs> give me a second. Ah. <sighs> She speaks between exaggerated breaths. You didn't need to run here, you know. I chuckle with a smirk. But I forgot to tell you where the club is. My earlier guess was right, I suppose. Ah, fair enough. It's like, damn it, I was looking to get out of that. I step into the corridor. Anyway, we're going? Yep. Sari beams, seeming to fully recover from her breathlessness as we start to walk up.
But I always like it when Sairi beams. We soon find our way up to a section of the school that I rarely visit besides for music class. Soon enough, we find our way to the club room. Have a peep through the window and can spot a purple-haired girl with a gentle yet intense expression that's focused on the book on her desk. I can also hear some partially muffled voices hinting at more members inside. Oh my gosh, how many members are there? Sari swings the door open and bolts into the room. Guys, the new member's here! Come on! But I haven't even figured out if I like the club yet. Oh well. I walk in like the beta cuck I am. Oh sorry, I timidly enter the room and wave as the club's other me new members, yeah whatever, look in my direction. Seriously, it would have been way better if they just said, um, you know, I walk in like the beta cuck I am. The girl with the purple hair closes her book before getting up and walking towards me. I think I've seen her before in my science class. I could be wrong though. I'm not known for my attention span in science after all, cause fuck that shit. She speaks in a soft voice that matches her gentle expression. Oh? So, your comrade that Sayuri was talking about. She always says nice things about you. Number 15. Natsuki, my queen! A much shorter girl with pink hair that's decorated with assorted red clips and ribbons comes up. Much like the other girl, I'm certain I've seen her in one of my classes. Just can't remember her name. Ah, was it like... Ah... Uh, Natsuko... Ah... Uh, Na... Nanako... Oh, what was it now? Truly, I'm not that bad with names, am I? Seriously, Sayuri? You brought a boy with a dick and balls? How could you? Way to kill the mood! The taller girl sighs. Natsuki. The other girl, apparently named Natsuki, relents and averts her gaze away from me. I'm also certain that this is the same Natsuki that Sari said made the cupcakes. Her small stature makes me think she may be a first year st- Oh, don't, don't, don't say that! Anything but that! I ain't going to prison. Sari then gets closer to me and whispers. Just ignore her when she gets moody. She then bounces back as she steps towards the other girls. Anyways, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the smartest of the club. Yuri's face goes a bit red. D don't say things like that. <laughs> Number 14. I can imagine someone like her has a bit of a struggle keeping up with people like Sayuri and Natsuki. And of course, there's... Comrade? I imagine that's Monica, who else could it be? A voice then calls out from behind me, causing me to turn around to meet a face I hadn't seen that much since the second year of high school. <gasps> Monica? The... the... the completely perfect and flawless being that is Monica DDLC? You're perfect in every way. Your beautiful green eyes and your perfect stature and your perfect perkiness. Ooh, wooga, a wooga. My face adopts a small grin because I am a massive simp in this mod. She doesn't look like she's changed too much. Then again, I've seen her around the school every so often, but we've not had a class together since last school year. Back then, she was the most popular girl in the year and I'm more than certain that she still is. She's smart, beautiful, athletic. She's also someone way, way out of my league of a guy like me. There's no way I could be, uh, you know, stand up to someone as beautiful and perfect as Monica, who totally hasn't done anything wrong, right? <laughs> T 
to be honest, I did develop a sort of schoolboy crush on her during the time we shared at English class, but I never worked up the courage to ask her out. Well, I guess MC, you're gonna be a player, just for the wrong girl. We did work on school on group projects a fair bit, though. I gulp. I haven't seen you in ages. How have you been? She smiles sweetly at me, still infectious as always, and wondering why do I sound like an anime protagonist. I've been good, just busy as usual. That reminds me, Monica, without a doubt, was the hardest working person I knew. <laughs> just, I'm just gonna keep rattling off the comment and uh, compliments. Her grades are always near the top or fully on the top of the class exams. <laughs> How about you, comrade? I scratched the back of my neck nervously. <laughs> you know, same old, same old. <laughs> so I just imagine she's like fucking beat red. Like just shaking nervously, sweat dripping down his face profusely. I chuckled just as nervously. Uh, anyway, why don't you come sit down before you have a heart attack? She gestures over to an amalgamation of desks in the center of the room formed to create a makeshift table. I also notice that Natsuki and Yuri have gone to the back of the club room, presumably to get some other things. With a nod to Monica, I then make my way to sit next to Sayuri, still feeling kind of shy because I couldn't imagine sitting next to a perfect goddess like Monica. Monica eventually joins us. I seriously don't know how Monica puts up with us peons. Whilst having the occasional chat with Sayuri, I do chat her. I do catch her making the occasional glance over at me. Eventually, she starts talking to me once again. So, what made you consider the club? I mean, I can't just lie to her. I I'm just such a big fan of literature, and um, I'm such a big fan of you, and um. I'm uh, in your mommy milk. I mean your mommy milkers. I mean I mean your mommy milkers. I mean your big big huge mommy milkers. I mean I mean y uh, literature. Well, Sayuri mentioned it on the walk to school this morning, and I told her I'd check it out. Yeah, that that go go with that. Ignore everything I just said, and yeah, we're we're going with that. I feel my face redden a little as I just literally said mommy milkers eight times in a row. <laughs> no need to get embarrassed, you're like the 500th guy who's done that around me. Monica eases any nerves I admittedly may have had. Hell, even the teachers do that. I promise we'll make you feel right at home, okay? How exactly are you going to plan on doing that? Again, I find myself smiling at her. We then hear Natsuki's footsteps approaching. I turn and notice her holding a small plastic container. Must be the fabled cupcake Sayuri was on about earlier. She then places the container on the table and rests her hand on the, the small lip of the edge of the lid. Okay, y'all ready? Her voice is lined with anticipation. After a collective nod, Natsuki practically rips the lid off, revealing a batch of white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. Ta-da! Natsuki says that with a big toothy grin, clearly proud of her work. The three of our eyes line the three of our eyes lighten up. They look amazing. <laughs> Bro, I, I imagine when you say like the three of our eyes, it's literally just like three eyes. I feel kinda bad about eating them. The curse of good looking food. So cute! Sarah's excitement overshadows everything else. We each take a cupcake and we start to eat. Honestly, they taste as great as they look. The soft texture of the white cream perfectly accompanies the taste of the small bits of chocolate. I turn to Natsuki, swallowing before opening my mouth. You made these? You a woman? Well, actually, it makes sense, but you made these? She raises an eyebrow. Uh, yeah, it's what I'm best at. 
Did you not read my character file? These taste great. Thanks for bringing them. <laughs> totally haven't been through that like 500 times as well. I give her an earnest smile, causing her to fold her arms and blush a little. Well, it's not like I made them for you or anything. Baka baka rar. I never said you did. I decided to give up on Natsuki's bizarre logic because we're not simping Natsuki in this mod and turn my attention to Yuri, who's coming over with a tray holding a collection of tea cups and teapots. Faint steam hinting at freshly made tea, always a pleasant smell. What the fuck? I mean, if it ain't iced tea, what's the point of drinking it? You keep a whole tea set in here? Yuri smiles as gently as ever. Because we have to put the word gently in a mod. Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. Number 13. I smile back. Well, I'm not complaining. Besides, I wouldn't turn down tea. Actually, I would if it ain't sweet doll ass tea from McDonald's. I'm glad, and as a matter of fact, this is actually what it is. Okay, never mind, Yuri, you're based. Yuri's cheeks redden a bit as she sets the tray down and starts pouring a drink for each of us. She then takes a seat after handing us our respective cups. So, comrade, what kind of things do you like to read? Hmm, I haven't read a book in like 8 years. I don't even know what a book even looks like anymore, you're gonna have to catch me up on that. I've been- I've literally been living in the woods. I was kind of afraid of this question. Like, yeah, I've read a fair bit in the past, but as I said, that was eight years ago, before I literally went off the grid because the uh, CIA was hunting me down for my large collection of Natsuki hentai, but nowhere near as much as anybody else in this club has, let alone Yuri. Of course, I still gotta be honest. Well, most of the time it ends up being like mangoes, song lyrics, and some other books. My voice trills off a bit. No worries. Maybe you'll pick up something to read during your time here, but you're acting like mangoes aren't literature. Maybe I will. I smile like Yuri again. I also noticed that Natsuki's head seemed to have perk up a bit when I mentioned me reading mangoes. Maybe I'll be able to get recommendations from them both one day. Who knows? Except that day will never come. As the conversations carry on between us, I learn a bit more about the girls' literary interests. Honestly, it's amazing that they all seem quite close despite their very tastes. It soon gets suggested that Natsuki's been writing poems recently, seemingly on the cute side. I'm kinda curious to learn more about that. You know what, Natsuki, share me your poems ASAP. I turn to her. You write your own poems, Natsuki? I, I guess. Why do you care? I find that impressive. Would you mind sharing them at some point? N no. She retreats into her chair a bit. You wouldn't like them. Not a confident writer, I presume. Bruh. Stating the obvious as usual. I feel the same as Natsuki. Yuri suddenly pipes up still as gentle as ever because we have to mention the words gentle and gently as many times as humanly possible. Sharing that level of writing requires more than just confidence. You must be willing to show you, your readers your vulnerable side, even showing them the deepest reaches of your heart. That was quite poetic if I say do say myself. Monica joins the conversation again because we haven't seen Monica in 5 minutes and we're all starting to lose our sanity. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe Natsuki would feel comfortable if you shared some of your work. Yuri goes to say something but falls silent shortly after a bit of stammering. <laughs> Yuri.exe has stopped working. I empathize with her in a way, you know, being a robot and all. Like, I'm not usually the best at sharing my more emotional side so freely, especially since I'm a robot that doesn't have emotions. Especially, especially, especially with people I've just met. I glance back at Monica. 
Uh, I guess it's the same for Yuri, too. Ah, Come on, you fucking dumbasses. Come on. Sorry seems slightly downcast. I wanted to read everyone's poems. I'm gonna force y'all to write poems right now and make me read them. Just, Sayuri pulls out the blicky, just like in Blue Skies. There was a moment of silence. Seemingly out of nowhere, Monica's vibrant green eyes sparkle with optimism. Again, bro. Uh... Okay, everyone. I've got an idea. Our collective gaze fixes onto Monica. How about we all go home and write a poem to our own, of our own, and then share them tomorrow? That way, we'll all be even. There's a bit of hesitation from Natsuki and Yuri. Kind of expected that to be the case, though. I go to speak. I def- Yeah! Let's do it! Hallelujah! Poggers! Kek! I'm suddenly cut up by Sayuri's burst of energy. I mean, that, that burst of energy was quite beast indeed, but hey, how the hell do you keep up with her? It does seem to put a smile on Monica's face, though. She turns to me. And since we've got a new member now, it's just strengthen our bond of the club. Oh yeah, speaking of which, I gotta go play the, uh, the bond we share at some point. Thanks, Hoopla. Isn't that right, comrade? Well, I... I hadn't been actively considering joining any clubs full-time, but I can deny that this club has quite a relaxed atmosphere. Because, be it cause of the girls themselves or simply because it's a smaller club, I still haven't quite worked that one out yet. It's probably because I have four vaginas in this room and I am the only dick. Besides, if writing poems is what it takes to reconnect with Monica, since this is what we're the only reason we're here, then I'd say it's worth it. I collect my thoughts. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'm totally not trying to get you to take your clothes off. Wait, you're joining? My response seems to take Sayuri by surprise. Didn't I say I was gonna join? I know you. Come on, you think I wouldn't join? Besides, it's kind of cozy here. Well, ah, I imagine it would be cozy if I just got to, you know, you know, lay down between your chest pillows, each and every single one of y'all. Yes, even Natsuki. The feeling of happiness about my decision seems to be mutual throughout the group. Hell, even Natsuki seems glad. Yeah, bro, I just complimented Natsuki's chest pillows. Of course he would be glad. If you just came for the cupcakes, I'd be super pissed. Sounds like something I could see myself saying. Well, that makes it official. Whilst Monica's voice is addressing the four of us, her eyes remain focused on me. Can't just say while. Welcome to the literature club. Or as we say in the discord, welcome to hell. After that, the meeting slowly comes to its conclusion. It was a lot less nerve-wracking than I thought it'd be. Everyone seems really nice too, which makes the atmosphere that much better. I pull out my phone to make a note for tonight's assignment. Write a poem for tonight. Sari then skips up to me as I slide my phone back into my pocket. You ready to go? Yeah, hang on. I sling that bag over my shoulder. Before we leave, I wave and say goodbye to the rest of the club. Whilst Natsuki and Yuri shyly wave back at me, Monica waves back in a way that's almost she's saying goodbye to an old friend, because apparently the way that Monica waves goodbye is different than the way that Yuri and Natsuki wave goodbye, because we're massive simps. See you tomorrow. Me and Sayuri be then begin our journey home. All throughout the walk home, my mind is already racing about what I could write tonight. However, there's only one thing, one person in fact, that my mind keeps coming back to. That being... 
Monica. Because of course it is. Just Monica. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna lose my sanity by the end of this mod, am I? I couldn't put a finger on it as to why she was floating around in my brain. Oh, it's almost like that's because that's what the mod is about. Maybe it's because of my still present crush on her that we for some reason have. I can't say for sure. All I do know is that she leaves me with this rather pleasant feeling in my chest, almost reminding me of when I first laid eyes on her. Oh my gosh, can you shut up? I stop momentarily and place my hand on my chest. Boom, 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 boom. No, yep, there. Yeah. My heart beats 130. My heart won't stop pounding. Oh no, don't pull an EMR. Earth to comrade. Zari's voice breaks my thoughts. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was just simping for Monica in my head. What? Dumb bitch. I turn to face her, my face feeling slightly red. You okay? I am still on my chest. I feel my heartbeat starting to set it. Of course I'm all. Of course I'm all right, bruh. I was just thinking about Monica, the most perfect being on planet Earth, literally Jesus Christ incarnate. It's nothing, Sayuri. You, you don't have to worry about it. You know, you're just a. You're just a fucking pleb. Now Monica, Monica's a literal goddess. I can't tell her why I'm feeling this way. Well, at least I think I do anyways. Just how would she even react? She probably uh, game end herself, that's why. 360 no scope neck rope. Just got stuff on my mind is all. I got Minecraft on my mind. The look that Sayuri gives me is one that says, I can see right through you, but she doesn't say anything to confirm that suspicion. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. I bid her goodbye as we go our separate ways. As usual, I try the door to see if Mum's back at work because we're British, man. I get my key out of my pocket and let myself in. I know Mum has been working two jobs since that my dad died, but honestly, it gets lonely sometimes being here on my own. I fetch my small bag of crisps from the cupboard to keep my stomach satisfied till dinner. Making my way upstairs, I take a quick detour into my bedroom, which I can describe as a nerd's paradise, to drop my bag and get out of my uniform. Can't really focus at home right like that now, can I? After that and more snacking on my crisps, I make my way to what used to be the guest room. We really don't have any long-term guests anymore since mom decided to get me, give me the room to myself to have somewhere to focus on my music. I still gotta tidy up this room at some point. It's like, bro, it's just, it's like, this just, this was really the best you could do for background art? Man, you should, you should have fired the fucking artist, bro. I could have drawn this. Like, legitimately, I could have done this. And I haven't drawn anything in years, bro. Thinking about it, it would probably be best to sort out the poem. Gotta make at least a decent first impression with my writing. I get up and return to my room. After sitting at my desk, I grab a pen and a single piece of paper and start jotting down what's on my mind. I remember that being a technique taught to us during the first year of English class. Okay, I'm gonna stop with the British accent unless he brings up mum again. Back then, I didn't expect it to be be using it outside of class. After about five minutes, I'm finished. I miss the standard emotional stuff. There's the remnants of when I may have gone too far into my heart. It's just that just the entire paper just says just Monica. I must have written down and then scribbled out Monica's name at least four or six times. Uh, burn up! Burn up! Even now, the thought of her makes my heart race. Maybe that schoolboy crush of mine never died. Grab my second sheet of paper, feel a new sense of determination as I start letting my heart guide my movements on my pen. Literally just starts for every day, I imagine a future where I could be with you. 
That in and of itself is oddly poetic of me. Is that a good sign? There's really only one way to find out. Every day, I imagine a future where I can be with you, cock, cock, dick, dick, ball, ball, penis. With the ring of the bell, another day of classes come to an end. Since my last class was music, I quickly made my way to the club room. To my surprise, I'm the first one in, because transition! Yeah, I beat everybody else's transitions in here. At least do I at least thought that Monica would have been here first, given her being club president and all. Seizing the brief time alone, I know I have. I take a seat at my nearest adjacent desk and take my laptop out of my bag to make some little tweaks to my latest class project. The project itself is nothing too out there. It's a simple piece driven mostly by a steady bass line, a piano, and a kick drum. Bro, my man's really taking music class seriously. It's akin to some of my earlier hyperactive productions, but definitely more simplistic when it comes to the sound design. I listen to it. Bro, you, you, this is where like the blog could have like really went up, you know, above and beyond. Just actually would have had like a track playing here. I listen again. Maybe I should scrap this. Yeah, well, that, that was amazing. <laughs> that was that. No, I mean, oh wait, he said that I should scrap. Oh, never mind. That was horrible. That was the worst thing I'd ever heard. Just then, my head darts back at the as the door opens. It's Monica. Monica, make we. Oh. Oh dear God. I'm okay. I'm okay. Just, just had a mini stroke there. I focused back on my laptop, praying she didn't notice me or my dilemma. However, I didn't hear her back. I didn't hear her back softly hit against the door and a long exhausted sigh. Glance back and her eyes meet mine. Hey, comrade. Hey, Monica. What's up, my beautiful princess? My queen? <laughs> I give her a gentle smile, because gentle and gently have to be said at least 500 times by the end of this mod. You good? She smiles back. Kinda. She sighs again. Just science class is stressing me out, because apparently science is, like, really difficult or something. I guess sympathize with her. I really can't. There's only two science teachers for our year, those being Miss Nakama and Mr. Kurosawa, because we're Japanese and, um, yeah, can we just go back to August of 1945? Whereas Nakana, Nakama is more youthful and her lessons tend to be more down to earth, from what Sayuri has told me, Kurosawa has a bit of a rep for being a hard ass. Let me guess, Kurosawa is giving you a hard time? She nods. I pull out a chair for her, and then proceed to smack it against her skull. Like it's the WWE. If only. If only. I don't even have anything, have to, I don't even have to say anything as she starts to come over to join me. Her eyes then focus on the screen of my laptop. What you up to? Bitch, can you get can you stop eavesdropping on me, bro? For fuck's sake. Damn. She seems curious. Her eyes first dart to the screen, then back to her. Or my eyes. I feel my cheeks redden a bit. It's nothing. Just a class project. Kinda of thinking of starting over. Hmm. She fo she focuses a little more on the screen before her eyes flicker back to meet mine. A smile forms across her face. Oh no, there's a piano track on here. Dear God, no! Mind if I have a listen? Uh, sure. Puggers! I smile back as I then hit the space bar to start the track. 
Again, part of me wants to restart it, but I can't help but notice that Monica seems to kind of enjoy it. Even her head is bobbing to the beat. As soon as it began, the track comes to an end. As I. Wait, as soon as it began, the track comes to an end and. Wow, that was a pretty fucking short track then. What, what is your track? A minute long? If on cue. And if on cue, the door opens and the rest of the club make their way into the room. Monica quickly turns to me, seemingly taken back by the sudden entry of the rest of the club. I'll tell you what I thought in a bit. She smiles sweetly and I smile back. That damn irresistible smile of hers! She's just absolutely perfect in every way and has absolutely no flaws. Oh my gosh, I just want to simp and then just eat her ass out right now. But pogger pogger cat cat. She then gets up and starts to greet the rest of the club. I quickly close my laptop and slide it back into my bag. I then feel the air quickly leave my lungs as a pair of arms suddenly clamp around me. Whoops. Hey, comrade! Sayuri's voice rings into my ears. Hey, Sayuri! A man has fallen into the river of Lego City. Has the Kobe Bryant rescue helicopter been repaired yet? Nope. Damn it. I struggle to get my words out as I wriggle my way to freedom. Yuri then approaches me, a warm yet timid smile. Wait, you didn't say gentle? Hallelujah, diversity! Bruh, the mod makers learned how to use a thesaurus! Honestly, at this point, I wish you just would have said gentle. Glad to see you didn't run away on us, comrade. I chuckle, returning the smile. You don't have to worry about me doing that totally. Besides, how can I run from a place as comfy as this? Ah, nothing like those two pillows right on your chest right there, Yuri. Ah, I could I could sleep on those for days. Koski soon interjects with a mix of her regular sass and a grin. Don't get too comfy though. You won't hear the end of it. I know, I know. Honestly, it's kind of amusing when Natsuki tries to be assertive. Then again, I'd buy- I'd cop that OnlyFans ASAP. Though, I have a feeling that if I said that, my nose would probably be the first to know it. Sari lets out a giggle before speaking again. Don't worry, comrade. Uh, don't worry. Comrade always gives it his best when he's having fun. Even helps me with busy work without asking. Without me asking. She then audibly counts everything I've helped her with. Cooking, cleaning my room. She eventually loses her train of thought. How dependable. Yuri smiles gently at the pair of us. There we go. You know, I just, I should just have a counter for every time the word gently is said. You know what, fuck it, I'm too lazy to even do that. I might be a little jealous if I'm honest. I chuckle, feeling my cheeks redden. To be fair, this isn't the first time someone might have gotten the wrong impression about Sayuri and I's friendship. No, 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 Yuri, it's not like that at all. I smile back at her, gently. Her room might get, her room gets a bit distracting when it's messy, you know. I focus more on the room than I do about Sayuri and, you know, her amazing figure. Completely naked. Without clothes. Maybe you should do that too, Yuri. Right now. Take off your clothes. Heck. I then turn to Sayuri. Not to, uh, not to mention the little incident with the bacon last week. Sorry, glares jokingly and pouts. Can we not bring that up? I then whispered to Yuri. Yeah, she almost set her kitchen on fire. Dumb thought, am I right? Yuri giggles gently. <laughs> like seriously, I'm pretty sure they're just, you know, this has to be a joke at this point, right? <laughs> After that, Everyone departs to what I assume are their usual activities. Natsuki's rummaging around in the closet. Damn, Natsuki's in that closet again. I wonder if she'll come out in June. 
Tyree's having a cheery conversation with Monica in the corner, and Yuri's face is buried within a quite sizable novel. Her intense expression hints that she's been longing for this moment. Speaking of novels, I should probably pick up a book to read. After all, I did join a literature club. It's really the least I can do. I walk to the back of the room and start scanning the books located there. And at that moment, I spot Stephen King's It! And then proceed to flip straight to the child orgy part. Yes, that is an actual section that is actually in It. There is a scene where there is a literal child orgy. I am not making that up. Look it up for yourselves. My eyes scan each title on the furious spine. Furious, furious artist, man. I mumble to myself, keeping my voice as quiet as possible as to not distract the girls. Exit music. Ah, nah, I've done that one too many times. Fallen angel. Nah, nah. I keep going on until my eyes meet on a particular looking spine. Within. <laughs> I go to pull the book off the shelf to check it out the book more thoroughly. That is until I feel a hand tap on my shoulder and I spin around, quite honestly taken aback. It's just Sayuri though, no big deal. I keep my voice low. Jesus Sayuri, you startled me. Sayuri just giggles proudly before speaking. Monica wants to ask you something. She then practically drags me by my arm to the front of the class where, as suggested, Monica is waiting for me. Any harder and she might have yanked my arm clean off. Monica closes her notebook and looks up at me, smiling once more. Hey, comrade. Hey, Monica. I find myself blushing. Sari gives me a sly glance at that simply says, I knew it, but Monica doesn't seem to notice. Sari says you wanted me for something. Uh, yeah, I do actually. Monica steps up from the desk and gets near me and Sayuri. I was gonna get some supplies from the art department and was wondering if you'd maybe want to tag along. The way she says that sends butterflies down my stomach. You know what, sure, Monica, we'll go right ahead, but I'm bringing the Glock with me, I'm bringing the Blicky. At the same time, I can't help but think... Wouldn't Sayuri be better for that? But I'm still this high. She stops herself and then lowers her voice a bit, as to not get the attention of Natsuki and Yuri. The posters. I decide not to press either of them on it just yet. Oh. In that case, I'd be glad. I smile at Monica. The look on Sayuri's face from earlier remains. Maybe this can give us a bit more time to talk. Monica beams at me. I promise we won't be too long. Honestly, I'd love to spend as much time as I can with her. Because Monica is just a perfect angel. Am I right, guys? Monica then turns her attention to Sayori. You don't mind watching the club whilst we're gone, right? Well, I am the vice president after all. I'm the best at handling egos, so yes. Sayori teases playfully before popping herself at the front desk. Like, man, with the way Sayori is able to manage egos, maybe she should be the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets. And with that, Monica lets Natsuki and Yuri know that the pair of us will be back in a bit before we make our way to the corridor. Once outside, I notice Monica looking back into the club with a not-so-subtle smile on her face. It's just so relaxing in there. I can't help but smile too. Ah, it is. I'm guessing that's part of the reason you started it in the first place. Monica turns to me. Honestly, yeah. Most of the other clubs were mostly just arguing over publicity, the budget, and the festival. Not to mention the drama. Oh, the drama! Oh my gosh! People are canceling each other left and right. Ah, it's just such a clusterfuck in there. 
She chuckles as she looks back internally. Like, in the second year... Like, in the second year, you must have been part of every major club there was. If I remember right, you were, you, weren't you in the debate club at the start of this year? Monica laughs as we start walking down the hall. Yeah, because Monica is just so perfect, and she's been in every club, and she's good at every sport. She just does everything at an elite level. I totally ain't getting vigilante vibes from this. Oh god, don't get me started on the debate club. Worst mistake of my life. The worst mistake of your life so far? No, I mean, it's actually the worst mistake of my life. Yes, joining that club was the worst thing that ever could have happened to me. It's literally just a bunch of infighting. Like, oh my gosh. Holy shit. I've never had to deal with a bunch, so many stupid ass motherfuckers in my entire life. It's honestly insane. Like, I, at one point, I was just telling them to just go off themselves because of how annoying they were. Oh my gosh. Like, I couldn't even with that place. I just had to get away. That's why I started the literature club. Anyway, sorry for the rambling. Um, let's go, let's go to the, wherever we were going. I, I don't even know anymore. Fuck it, let, let, let the script just guide us. As we get further, the conversation only grows. It's not too long till Monica's letting me know how most of the bigger clubs aren't all they're cracked up to be. Eventually, we end up talking about the literature club once again. I'd rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Until that something special becomes tainted. Her enthusiasm is just about as contagious as her smile. In that case, I'm surprised more people haven't joined yet. It is true, though. Yeah, but I know that, you know, everyone will just, you know, the people in this club will just run everybody away. I mean, I know it's a literature, I mean, a literature club doesn't sound too exciting. Well, for me, it's only fair to judge a club by its members, and at least from what I can tell, everybody else in the club seems really nice and close with each other. Oh, that, that isn't until you actually get to know them. Monica speaks again. That only makes events like the festival that more important. Hopefully we can all grow the club before we graduate. A thought pops into my head. So after that, would Natsuki become president or something? Monica giggles. No, no, no. Natsuki's in the same year as the rest of us. Oh, my bad. Thank God. I ain't going to jail. Oh, don't apologize. She gets that all the time. We keep walking until we reach the door to the art department. It's a section of the school I've not visited since my first year. To be honest, I was never really any good at art in the traditional sense. Being more creative with computer and music software, so I dropped out of it to start of the start of the second. Holy shit. I noticed Monaco peering through, peeking through the door, presumably checking if there's a club going on or something. We're clear. It's like Bravo 6 going dark. Monica calls me over as she opens the door and I quickly follow her inside. Monica's already made her way to, to the supply closet and has started searching. I, on the other hand, just idly stand there whilst taking the occasional glance at her. Eventually, she breaks this. She breaks the silence. Hey, could you hold this for a sec? She holds out a small pile of cardstock. I take it and she thanks me with the same sweet smile she always has. Because Monica is just so gorgeous and beautiful. In a way, I'm glad we're doing this out of normal school hours. God only knows the kind of rumors that would sprung up if anyone outside of the club saw us alone in a classroom. Although admittedly, the thought of us making a Wait, hold up. Pause. The thought of making out in a barren classroom feels to pause. Comrade. Monica's curious tone snaps me out of my little daydream. You okay? Yeah, it just stays out of it. <laughs> I stammer as I try cover 
Like, as I try cover my back. As I try covering my back. Luckily, she seems to buy it. Bro, spelling error? Spelling error? Immediately downgrade the mod one tier? <laughs> no worries. She giggles as she steps out of the closet and shuts the door behind her. It happens to the best of us. Can imagine you doing it, you being such a perfect goddess and all. I chuckle. Well... Oh my gosh, Monica, you mean to tell me that you're actually a human that has flaws? Ain't no way! <laughs> she traces the edge of a desk with her finger as if tracing back her thoughts. It's happened to me before. And when Sayuri first came to the club, she caught me napping on the front desk. Well, that sounds more like Sayuri than you, Monica. You mean to tell me that you're actually a plebeian? I decided to tease her a bit. Coffee only gets you so far, you know? Ah, uh, you just didn't have your coffee. We all know that goddesses drink at least eight gallons of coffee a day. Oh, never mind. My bad. Yeah, she's right about that. Honestly, outside of the club, Monica seems really genuine and down to earth. Just, just literally perfect. Part of me wonders if anyone else has this side of her. I mean, I'm guessing that everyone else in the club has, and her other friends have seen it. I think we're all done here. Ready to head back? Oh, uh, yeah! With you? I'll do anything with you. Especially if it's in the bedroom. With your clothes off. I make sure I've still got everything she's handed me, and we start to make our way back upstairs. Let's go, transitions! Why we didn't just use an elevator is beyond me. But I'm not complaining about spending more time with Monica. Just Monica. Before we start to reach the club room, I decided to ask about the track we listened to before the club started. So, what did you think about the track from earlier? I liked it. Her eyes beat mine. My only problem with it is that it's too short. We both laugh a bit about that find myself blushing again. It is nothing really, like, oh my gosh. Besides, knowing you, you're probably better at music than I am, totally. I did practice piano a bit, but I wasn't any good at it. I highly doubt that. Monica's perfect at everything. I bet Monica could literally dunk a LeBron James. As soon as we make our way back to the club room, Upon entering, nothing, not much has changed. Yuri is still focused on her novel, whilst Sayuri and Asuki are chatting near the windowsill. Sayuri then notices up both and practically skips towards us. You get everything we needed? Both Monica and I nod. Yep, honestly, Comrade was a real help. I give a smirk. It's no problem, really. Natsuki then pipes up as Sayuri collects everything and takes it to the front. Bruh, hey, bruh, I'll pipe Natsuki up, bruh. Just saying. What took you two so long? Are you making out? I could never imagine that in a million years. If I would only do that with you, my queen. As much as I hate to, <laughs> as much as I hate to have that happen, I can't help but be a little taken aback by how sincere she sounded. I glance at Monica and we both share a blush. But the more I look at her, the more I see a faint smile begin delicately painted on her face. Maybe deep down, she wanted that to have been a reality. Asuki then focuses in on me. Honestly, comrade, I thought you'd be a pump and go kind of guy. But color me impressed. She caps that off with an insanely cheeky smile. Pumpkin go cut him. Oh, right. Because I'm a dense motherfucker and couldn't have picked that up the first time she said that. My face goes an even deeper shade of red. One that my nerdy brain can only describe as almost cock a demon. I have no idea what that even is. But okay. My eyes widen as well. No, 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 it's okay. I, 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 I
By the time I gather myself, Nautica has already gone closer to me and brings herself to my ear. Well, as close as someone as short as sir can get. It's obvious you've thought about it. I go to deny it, though thankfully I don't need to as Natsuki's already trotted off safely back under the windowsill. Yuri looks over at her and sighs. Please show some decency, Natsuki. I was only teasing, for fuck's sake, Yuri. Natsuki's voice whines as Yuri shakes her head. I can deny that it was at least kind of funny. I don't have much time to settle down before Monica announces to the club, and we all literally get down on our knees and, you know, look up as Monica preaches to the choir. Oh, holy Monica, what do you gotta say for us today? Okay, everyone, get down on your knees and... Yeah, it's time to share poems. With that, Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly get their poems out of their bags and as do I. Sayuri pulls hers out of her pocket. Typical Sayuri. Monica then walks over to me. You remember to write a poem last night? I did, yeah. I grumble. It was kind of the first thing I did when I got back. It's probably not any good. Monica then pats my shoulder. Oh my gosh! Ah! I have the contact of a human woman! Ah, I haven't felt this in my entire life! Ah! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not really good at this either. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. Doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I know how to. I need to know how to manipulate people as part of being in the debate club. A faint blush then overcomes her cheeks. Besides, I'm just looking forward to see how you express yourself. The way she smiles at me, combined with how she said that last part seen past, right, sends a rather pleasant feeling down in my stomach. I can't describe it too well, but it feels really sweet. You too, Monica. She then strides off back to the front desk to get her notebook. Still feeling a tinge awkward about the whole scenario I've thrown myself into, I go to share my poem with Sayori. After all, she knows me better than anybody else in this club does. That in mind, I go over and sit in front of her. Transition! Hey, you know what? Fuck you, that's where we're ending it all for today. If you enjoyed this episode of Doki Doki Within and you want to see more, make sure to hit that like button, bro, because it shows me and YouTube that this shit is poggers. And, of course, consider subscribing and turning on the bell if you haven't, even though that doesn't really do much nowadays, but I still appreciate it, since this is the one-stop shop for DDLC content, bruh. And, as always, until next time, so long, comrades. Fuck you, cuz! The way I sing may not be pretty, may not be